Behind these doors, there's a revolution where greenhouse gases are being transformed into the products that you and I buy every day. This is New Light Technologies in Costa Mesa, Orange County. Mark Harima is its CEO. We would like to fundamentally change how we're making plastics, where we're actually doing it as a tool for good. New Light uses methane gas collected from farms and landfills. It's a greenhouse gas 23 times more potent than carbon dioxide. That's right, they're turning pollution that causes global warming into plastic. The whole company started when I read a newspaper article about methane emissions from cows. And you start to realize that those emissions, you basically just have the equivalent of open natural gas pipes just gushing into the air. So after I read this article, started working through different ideas, called up my buddy, Kenton Kimmel, said, hey, I want to talk to you about something. Come meet me at Las Galandrinas. So we sat there and had burritos and said, you want to, you want to tackle this thing? He said, sure, why not? We had no idea the 11-year journey that lay ahead of us. You may think it's too good to be true, but here I am, sitting on the proof. This chair is made from air carbon, a material that's doing its part to protect the Earth's ever-warming climate. So how do they do it? This is our main polymerization reactor. Okay. So what's happening here is we have air and methane emissions going into the tank. Okay. And this tank is essentially filled with water. As those gases travel through the water, the enzymes grab one part onto air and one part onto the methane emissions and combine them into a polymer. I see, so it goes from gas to solid in this tank. Right here. You put in all the raw materials and nature does the rest. Exactly. The next step is to remove water from the mixture until it forms a powder. So this is a um, sort of purified in powder form. Can I touch this? Absolutely. Is it safe? This polymer is actually produced in your body and my body right now. So your body actually won't reject it. It seizes as its own. Oh, cool. So downstream, you may be able to make materials like prosthetics out of this. Absolutely. The final step is turning the material that we made in that first tank and turning it into pellet form. Plastic pellets that New Light calls air carbon. Air carbon can be used in many different forms. Um, and so it just depends on what the consumer wants. Whether it's a biodegradable form, a non-biodegradable recyclable form, whatever it is they want. Sounds incredible. Plastic from pollution? But making plastic in a green way isn't the only concern. KCET environmental journalist Chris Clark worries about the impact of plastic products after they're used and discarded. There are real problems with the way we dispose of plastic that are related to, but different from, the problems in making plastic. So you could have a, a process that makes plastic that is completely environmentally sound, and if you're using it to make single-use grocery bags and those go into the ocean, they're going to choke a sea turtle just as hard as the ones that come out of an oil well. See, almost all plastic on the market right now is made from fossil fuels, not carbon emissions. Plastics bring with them all of the environmental problems from oil drilling, from gas drilling. If you're concerned about fracking, that's a plastics issue. If you're concerned about oil spills, that's a plastics issue. Air carbon could be the answer. But Chris is a bit skeptical that this process could have a real impact on climate change. Maybe the process works really efficiently at small scales, but it doesn't scale up all that well, or maybe there is some hidden glitch that they haven't found yet, which is always the case with new technology. But Mark and his partner Kenton have been at this for over a decade. The first version of air carbon wasn't what they'd hoped. When we went to produce furniture out of it, in fact it was this chair model that we're sitting on here today, so we sent the material off, I went into the CEO's office uh, the day after we ran it and said, how did it go? He said, well, um, this, and he held up a piece and snapped it, you know, in one hand and said, it's just junk. You know, it's, it's way too brittle. It doesn't work. So that was a very tough day. And it took us many years to figure out how to make it so strong where you actually can't notice the difference between it and the oil-based material that it's replacing. Today, air carbon's being used in 70 different products around the world. So what have we got here? So this is a stool seat. Okay. So it can be used for laboratories, classrooms. And it's, I mean. It's, it's in my office today. Oh yeah? It's sturdy, it's not like flimsy. Well, you know, it goes through all the sort of fancy tests, but ultimately it has to pass the gorilla test. Yeah. Which is, you know, the burliest guy on the floor basically <laughs> drop kicks it. If it doesn't pass that, it Yeah, then you can't work. really sell it. I really hope this pans out. It could solve one or two big problems that we have to face right now. It won't solve all the problems that we have, but it can solve one or two. What I hope is that New Light 
starts a new wave of technologies. Technologies that harness carbon emissions as a resource and allow the market to drive this solution, allow consumers to drive this solution. But in the meantime, the demand for air carbon keeps growing. New Light hopes to expand their operations to keep up. This is the first product that actually launched to market, so I was obviously overjoyed as a yeah, proud for papa. Sure. And who knows? The next time you buy a cell phone case, you could be doing your part to combat climate change. I'm Cara Santa Maria for SoCal Connected.